former Republican Minnesota Governor Tim Baleni, uh, what he makes of all of this. There's been a great recruitment effort on the part of some to see Romney run for that seat. I think it's a safe Republican seat no matter, but he would be the favorite candidate early on. But what do you think? Well, I hope he does run. I think he'd be a spectacularly good senator. He'd have an immediate impact in the United States Senate. And, of course, I think the people of Utah and the Republican Party there would embrace him. So I think it would be a, a fairly easy election for him. You know, a lot of people are looking what's going on now, uh, Governor, and saying, you know, uh, you should run for the Senate. A lot of big names are passing up such an opportunity, uh, but that in your state they could use you. What do you say? Well, Neil, I am very interested in public service and service for the common good. There are a lot of different ways to do that, but I'll tell you today that running for the United States Senate in 2018 won't be part of those plans. So you have no interest in hearing out some of these fundraisers who are saying, we need a bigger Republican name. We have no one to, to, to go for this seat. You're saying, don't talk to me. Well, I have uh, I certainly appreciate that kind of encouragement and uh, people thinking of me in those terms. But, uh, you know, if anybody's going to run for the United States Senate this November, that's now only 10 months or 11 months, uh, 10 months away. And it's going to be a very competitive race and a tough state for a Republican. So you'd have to start very soon. And like I said, I'm interested in continuing to serve, but there's a variety of ways to do that. Running for U.S. Senate this year won't be one of them. Have you ruled out public office altogether? Not necessarily, Neil. I, I enjoyed my time in public service. I started at the local level, served at the state level, of course, and it's one way to serve. I think it can be a very helpful and meaningful thing to do, and I enjoyed it, but I, I also enjoy a lot of other things as well. Do you um, wonder what the issue is with guys like yourself, very established, well-regarded, you know, public officials, former public officials, not interested uh, in running, not only all the incumbents who are stepping down in your party, but all the other incumbents and big names who are not interested in filling the void? Well, I think a little more context is helpful. Obviously, if you're Mitt and you're running in Utah in an overwhelmingly red state, that gives you a more hopeful outlook. It's not to say that a place like Minnesota couldn't go Republican this fall in that Senate race or, or other races. Um, but you have to take into consideration this effects of the tax bill is just starting to reveal itself. It could be much better economically than people expect. And the sort of doom and gloom by some re relative to Republican candidacies could turn much brighter by fall. But at the moment, in light blue states or blue states, it looks to be an uphill battle. You know, uh, Governor, there are a number of uh, Democrats who took over big states. Virginia on Saturday, uh, of course, that was not a pickup as much as continuing a democratic trend but more importantly new jersey today uh phil murphy sworn in to take chris christie's place there talking up the idea of a, a tax on the wealthy i want you to listen to this a a stronger and fairer new jersey ensures that the wealthiest among us pay their fair share in taxes so working so working and middle class families can keep more of their hard earned money. Now, Governor, you avoided the term millionaires tax. Even Stephen Sweeney, the man who runs the Senate, uh, the Senate president there, of course, Democrats have the run of the table, controlling all branches of government. Uh, that looked like a slam dunk until Sweeney said, you know, we don't want to chase rich people out of the state, especially now that they can't write off their state local taxes. What do you think about this? I think New Jersey's got a lot of problems, Neil, but being undertaxed is not one of them. At their 8.75% highest marginal tax rate, it's one of the highest in the nation. And by the way, once you factor in the loss of state and local tax deductions in a high tax state like New Jersey under the recently passed federal tax bill, there's going to be a lot of people in New Jersey who are high income people who are already getting an increase in their taxes. So. I think that's misguided. And by the way, former Governor Chris Christie vetoed that idea five times when he was governor of New Jersey. I know. Well, I'm a resident of that state. You know, the one thing I do see, at least in this new governor in New Jersey, is he's not getting up the fight on that. It's very popular with the left. Um, and, you know, you could use the argument that you just said that you chase successful people away. We've seen that happen in places like Illinois and elsewhere. But if he goes through with it, uh, what then? Well, I think you'll see, both because of the effects of the federal tax bill and potential uh, bad decisions by 
left-leaning state policymakers that you're going to see a shift in money and people over time because there's a good chunk of people, it won't be all of them, who will say, I'm not giving that much more of my money to the state of New Jersey, and they'll relocate. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of back and forth about the president's language uh, in, in meetings, private and otherwise. Uh, what do you think of it? Because almost a week later, that's all anyone's talking about. Well, I think if you look at what President Trump has done substantively, the appointment and confirmation of Neil Gorsuch, the passage of once-in-a-generation pro-growth, uh, pro-economic development tax reform, uh, trying to right-size and common sense many regulations, uh, trying to get some common sense back into our trade policies, a strong posture towards national defense and security and more, that substantively is a good list. Uh, it just, he, you know, he's sort of unfortunately characterizes his views and things in ways that are upsetting to people and that distracts from, I think, the debate on the merits. You know, Governor, it is possible your Minnesota Vikings could be on, on route to the Super Bowl. They need another win. But the fact of the matter is it would be the first time, at least to my memory, that uh, the venue in this case would be to one of the participants. And a lot of people saying that won't be fair. What do you say? <laughs> well, it's the luck of the draw. It'll be the first time in Super Bowl history right. that, the, uh, uh, that that happens. But all I can say to you, Mr. Cavuto, is skull, brother. Skull. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Duly noted. Governor, thank you very, very much.